Throughout the history of the world, the rich and powerful have dominated it, and very few people have had any control of their own governments. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets. On Tuesday night, I gave the order for British forces to take part in military action. This is the story of the attempt to change that, to win power for the people as a whole. It's the story of a great idea, democracy, and the struggle to make this idea a reality has often been bitter and bloody. After 50 years in Parliament and 11 as a cabinet minister, I've had some experience of democracy, the limits to it, and the threats to it. And all the power that I ever had, I got from those who voted for me, and to whom I was accountable, and from whom I learned everything. The basis of democracy is the belief that we were all born equal and that that equality must be accepted by those in power. We should be peaceful. We don't want the army. We don't want the gunshot in the fight. Probably the main lessons, if you don't keep up the pressure for democratic control, you lose it. It's use it or lose it. And that is something that people find hard to understand. There is never a final victory for democracy. It's always a struggle in every generation. And you have to take up the cause time and time and time again. And we've also learned that those rights can only be won collectively. But in the attempts to win those rights, Many people have been imprisoned and tortured by those who have power and were determined to retain it. In Britain, we don't elect our head of state or the House of Lords, but we do elect members of Parliament. Spit it out! Come on! Yet even so, most real power in the world is still exercised by those we do not elect. We are still far from governing ourselves. Money gives power to those who have it and those who control information still dominate our thinking. And of course, military power has always allowed certain countries to dominate others. That was the basis of the old British Empire, and it's the basis of the new American Empire, too. The American Empire is overwhelmingly the most powerful empire the world has ever known. The defence budget of the Pentagon is greater than the ten next most powerful countries in the world put together. The United States have got 745 bases around the world in 134 countries. This is why a historical perspective is so important, for there are many myths which need to be exposed. The word democracy is a Greek word, and it can be translated into people power. Those in power in ancient Greece realized the best way to defuse criticism was to incorporate the critics by encouraging discussion. And that's exactly what was tried, a sort of early version of the town meeting. And those public meetings, uh, like tribal gatherings in other countries, did allow some sort of consensus to develop. But in Greece, those citizens who were brought in did not include women or the slaves, for they were seen as inferior. One of the myths of English history is that democracy began at the time of Magna Carta. Now, Magna Carta, sometimes spoke of as the birthplace of democracy, is actually rubbish. Magna Carta was a struggle between the king and the landowners. It had nothing to do with the people. The people were entirely excluded. What happened there was that 
the landowning barons confronted King John, who was a weak man, and demanded greater rights for themselves, and he simply had to give way. The demands were laid out in Magna Carta, which was signed in a field near the small town of Runnymede. There are lots of references to taxation and an attempt to guarantee some basic rights for the powerful. It was laid down that no free man shall be seized or imprisoned except by the lawful judgment of his peers, his equals, or by the law of the land. And to no one will we sell, to no one deny the right of justice. Magna Carta only extended the privileges of democratic power to 25 of the wealthiest landowners. These 5,000 words are supposed to be the basis of modern British democracy, but there's no reference to democracy there at all. The first real turning point came a hundred years later with the famous peasants' revolt against the poll tax which had been levied to pay for a war with France. And when we look back on that story, the man who's remembered is the Reverend John Ball, who was a Christian minister famous for his sermons which articulated the argument that the peasants were trying to put forward. He was what was called a hedgerow priest. I didn't quite know what that meant uh, until I looked it up. And he was so controversial, no bishop would give him a parish, so he preached in the hedgerows. And the interesting thing about the Reverend John Ball is that he cited God as the grounds for his campaign for freedom. And this is what he said. In the beginning, we were all created equal. If God willed that there should be serfs, he would have said so at the beginning of the world. We were formed in Christ's likeness, and they treat us like animals. Matters cannot go on well until all things are held in common. <laughs> 